Hey there everyone, my name is Atesh and I make coding related videos. And as a coder, somebody who push the code in the production almost every week and we have a lot of products running in the market. Not only that as a coder, I also make a lot of coding videos and throughout the journey a lot of tools changes throughout the period. Like I use a few tools for creating photos, I use a lot of tools to write my code which includes VS Code, Cursor and some terminal based code editors as well like Helix is one of my favorite these days. So from time to time I always share the journey of what coding tools I'm using these days and I want to talk about just one specific tool and one specific code editor that I'm using these days a lot and I think this has got tiny bit better over the time. So let me introduce you with this uh, that I'm using these days and this looks like a code editor in front of you but this is not a code editor. This is a terminal. I was pleasantly surprised when I saw this button and I just accidentally click on it. Usually I don't have this one so I just keep it as just like this and this is what I use as my terminal. If you look at this I, I even run the curl commands through it and if I just scroll over it there will be endless commands and all of that. The terminal is now really smart that I don't have to look and hunt for these commands uh, from any uh, of the online blogs and forum. I just ask it to do the things for me and I'll be honest I have become a little lazy with that and that's a good thing actually. I anyways would have hunt those commands from those forums and stuff. Instead now just I can ask my terminal that hey do this for me or install this through brew in my system. And when I clicked on this tools panel, previously there was a tool which I used very less I'll be honest here which is warp drive. I do have an access of that but I have used it very less. And when I saw this project explorer I was like what is this? Like now we have a full fledged project explorer within this folder. So now when I have to give the context to any Claude or any of the terminal based uh, AI agents I can just drag and drop this. I can literally just right click and uh, copy the relative path or the path and just provide the context. So it just does everything for me. Not only that it automatically detects that what version of the node I'm running, where is it running, what's the branch I am on, what's the changes that I have made and one of the best thing is whether you use warp or not one thing that I have analyzed is all those AI agents whether it's Claude, Gemini or whatever you are using they work relatively better in the terminal as compared to in the cursor, in the VS code or any other editor that you are using. Surely I haven't tested out much about the Google's anti-gravity, I will try that very soon. But one thing is for sure they all work relatively better within the terminal. So whatever the terminal you're using try to spin off those agents or those LLM models or whatever you're doing with them in the terminal itself. And here what I really like is I get a whole lot of free access to that. So it says auto here in the agent mode by the way you have the agent mode you have the terminal mode and I keep on switching and flipping between them. You also have a slash command so they all the things that you heard about or hear about them like the plan mode the MCPs and prompts and all these things are available. There's a diff view, there's index, in it, and this is my favorite, the plan one. Of course the usage is also my favorite because I like to keep a tab on how much I have spent on that. But the plan one is one of the best one. You can do all the plannings and stuff and then hand it over to any of the agents like Claude, Cursor, whatever you're using. But what you'll also like about it is that it has this model which is available. And they have a really generous free tier which I think a lot of people are not even using it. So go ahead use it, it's, it's your time. So if you click on this, look at this, how well they actually give it and a whole lot of free tier is also available to you. So if I want to go with GPT-5, it says intelligence good, speed is good, cost is really less. But on the other hand if I go to 4.5 Sonnet, the cost is increased. So it gives me idea that how much the intelligence speed and what's the cost I'm paying for each one of them. So there is solid thinking, notice here if I use 4.5 Haiku the cost is significantly lower but the opus, oh this, the cost is really high. So before selecting any one of them you realize that how is it all going on. And there's a whole lot of this uh, which you can use Gemini Pro 3 and how much they, I really like this. And they have enough of uh, generous free tier that you can go ahead and use this at this point. I think there is no good reason not to use this, not only that. There is a special setting in this one so let me give you this. So if you look at this AI, there is a whole lot of active AI you can go for all of these settings and stuff but interestingly there is this API key. 
So in case you don't want to use their model, you can just go ahead and inject your OpenAI key or Anthropic key and that's it. It's like bring your own keys. You get all the superpower of the terminal which Warp offers you, but also you get the uh, your own billing system, which I absolutely love. But turns out you will be using it very less because their free tier is so generous that I highly recommend everyone to try this out. They have this billing and everything all managed and up here. But at this point, I'm just wondering, is this even a terminal anymore? This looks like a full-fledged IDE. I can do my diff checking, plan mode. It's very difficult for me to get out of the terminal. And on top of that, what I'm using these days is the Helix. So here's the interesting thing. In case you don't configure your Helix much, Helix is like the long lost cousin of VS Code or Vim, whatever you like to that. So if I just go ahead and open up my Helix, what you'll notice that I have access to all these files, but wherever I am into this file, let's just say I want to open the index, I am here and I also get my familiar terminal as well. I can just click and open them as well. That, that's the interesting part. And I have all the commands, all the access to the things. And I, it is very hard for me to now go on the terminal, even for the teaching purposes, because I do everything from here. Spinning off my, my simulators and emulators of uh, Android phones or iOS phones and everything just happens uh, right up here. And I can just go ahead and say simply, hey, I just don't like this. And I can just simply go ahead and quit this. Uh, by the way, they do have a whole lot of modes available in this. They give you the suggestions. So combining this editor with the Helix is such a good thing. And I can just look at this. I can just go ahead and see, hey, what option I have. So you don't always get stuck in the code editor. You can just go ahead and simply say, I want to quit this. So you can just go ahead and quit this outside move on further. You can just go ahead and ask it to install more things like maybe there's an SSH utility or you can just simply say install uh, git for me and it will just go ahead and do all the installation steps and everything. I just love this that how it actually can see the errors and everything with this. I can attach the context into that. That means I can just attach directly the files and all of that. And at this moment, I would say the terminal is not probably the accurate word. I don't know what to call warp anymore. It's not a terminal. It's not just an IDE. I also use it as a full-fledged IDE. I also use it in my agents. I also use it to check and build stuff. I don't know at this point. Uh, but one thing I would say that if you're not using Warp, you are definitely missing out a lot and it's totally free, their pricing plan. You don't need to worry about pricing. I am also on the free plan. Uh, includes the AI credit. At this point, it is good. And one thing I would like to mention at this point is keep an eye on their change log because their change log is something which will eventually show you all these things. They don't mention this too much, but I had to look up into their change log that, hey, what's the new that you're going? For example, the plan mode, this was probably not mentioned in their tweets or any release, but it is there. I can just write the PR and stuff, and this is very useful for me. And all these things, I just have to look that, okay, now I can search the web. And this is so important that now I can just copy any of the docs and just give it to my Warp agent that, hey, get the full context of this documentation. It creates a folder structure and all these markdown files and get the whole context of the updated documentation of any product, anything that I'm building up. And it gives me suggestions based on that. This is really nice. So keep an eye on their change log. It is very difficult when you are developing the application so fast and so quickly that they happen to announce everything. Things are going to get lost, but luckily they don't lose all these things within these change logs. They mention everything. So I might, I myself find more into their change logs than anything else. And yeah, at this point, I would say, go ahead and use this. Even if you don't want to buy or anything, don't buy. I hardly care on that, but at least use this their agent mode is equally powerful to any of the modern like cursor or anything. I would happily be comparing them with any, the, any of the competition. And the best part is I can run and check all these multimodal instances and everything absolutely for free. Hey, that, that's the fun part. So I will be sharing more on the tools that I keep on using and stuff. There are so many other tools that I'm using these days, which are uh, like, free. Some of them are not so popular or available on the GitHub and stuff like that. Uh, you have to download them. Like one of the thing that I'm using these days. So if I go ahead and just remove that and let me just close this. So one of the tool that I'm using, 
instead of using any of the postman or stuff, I kind of a uh, going back into the curl commands. It works nicely. One of the another thing that I'm using these days, I'll definitely walk you through with uh, later on. Uh, but this one is actually pretty nice. So this is new tool that is source copy and I'm using it for running my Android apps and stuff. And I will definitely make more videos about them that why I use that, why I'm so much excited about them. So for example, if I just go ahead and copy this, I previously used to pay for a product for mirroring my mobile app, but now I can just go ahead and just use this one. And it spins up a mobile application that I was building for a tutorial, upcoming tutorial and stuff. And it does everything for me. Now, I hope you can imagine how hard it is for me to go from a terminal to any code editor when I see everything just right here. I can just be inside my terminal and keep my mobile app just right up here and do everything within this. All the commands terminal are running in here. I can just simply go ahead and open up another terminal and get started with it just right there. So probably I'm spoiled and I get my all AI suggestions in here. But just wanted to mention that there are so many tools that are changing and I'm going back to them. Like one of them is curl. I happen to be using Postman for so much long and requestly and all other tools. But these days I found myself much more productive and I can actually store all these curl command for other people in my team to use them and uh, get even the AI suggestions. The more context you have without the JSON file, just the curl command. AI happens to perform much better with that. So I will definitely share all these things in the upcoming videos as well. But these, these are just my raw thoughts and my experiences with the tools as the things are changing in the AI ecosystem. I will not shy away to, shy, uh, to share these tools in the future as well. And that is it. These videos are just the experience sharing. That is it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.